Hi there, and welcome to an episode where we're going to talk about a very important topic. In my humble opinion, it is speed bumps. And I say this is important because they are so, so very common. And it's, you know, it's one of, one of the most common questions I get from clients or from, you know, anyone in the community here is like, I did so well, and now this happened. What's going on? So let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this um, topic. And first of all, let's define a speed bump. What is a speed bump? Well, a speed bump is is, an, is a period of more struggle after uh, a period of less struggle. And very commonly, it's, it's described as something like this. Um, I slept well for a week, but now I had three sleepless nights. Or I was, going, I was doing fine for three months, but now the last week has been really bad. Again, you have a stretch where your, your sleep happened easier, things were going well, and then there's a period of more struggle. And very often it is worded as I'm having a setback or a relapse. And um, I don't think those uh, descriptions are accurate because a relapse, you know, sounds like you have some kind of illness and insomnia is not that insomnia is just a, a matter of misunderstanding and like that safety part of the brain so I, I i don't think relapse is a, a good word for this and setback i don't think is is true either because you you cannot really go backwards uh, when once you started understanding because education is yours for a life so i think uh, of this more as a speed bump uh, and uh, we're going to over five things that i think can be really helpful to think of when you've had a speed bump, or just, just for general information as well. So here's number one. You now have proof that things are proceeding as normal. You know, it, no matter how uncomfortable and scary, et cetera, this can be, uh, having this speed bump is, is just evidence that things are proceeding in a typical and normal way. And why do I use the word normal here? Well, it is because unlearning, or learning for that matter, is non-linear there is just no way that we unlearn the fear the thought patterns that have been created over often a long period of time when you've had trouble sleeping in a linear way the path is bumpy for everyone if it if, it, if the if to me like if a client is like not really having any speed bump or, or somebody doesn't have that then to me they didn't really have insomnia they probably just kind of flirted with it or had a little bit of like fleeting, um, a fleeting worry or something like that. So uh, and another way to think of this, uh, I, think, I think can conceptualize this is if you think about like the stock market or you think of, you know, any, you can pick any stock, you know, like, you know, Amazon stock or whatnot. And you look at, you know, over the years, how it's like increased in value. You can see that it, it, it wasn't like 5% every day. I, imagine that. Imagine if the stock went up like exactly 5% every single day. After like two days, somebody would be like, this is not real. Something weird is going on. Because, you know, in the stock market, it's like multiple, multiple humans that are, you know, involved in this, like a lot of thinking and pondering and whatnot. And like in an individual level, it's the same that you, you, you just, it's just like non-human to, to have, uh, you know, a scenario where you'd be like, oh, I slept. 2% better every single day. I was 2% less scared every single day. It just does not happen that way. So uh, this kind of bumpy path is a, a proof that you have a normal brain, a normal functioning human brain. So it's, it, to me, very reassuring that you have this speed bump pattern, even if, of course, it's uncomfortable, but that is, to me, very important to know. Now, now number two here, this is another real benefit with having a speed bump, which is that you're less likely to close the hood. What do I mean with this? Well, I've this happened to me many, many times. I've had a client who quickly does quite well, and it really doesn't have a real like speed bump. And of course, maybe maybe to me it could be like, oh, maybe they didn't really have insomnia. Maybe it's just a fleeting thing. But more often than not, that client will come back at some point and now have a little bit of struggle. And this is the reason. So. Uh, of course, you know, insomnia is really uh, a product of fear, like fear of being awake, fear of not sleeping, you know. And when you, for example, you know, you tune into this channel or you work with myself or another sleep coach, then often often it, you, you can have this, like it, it can be really 
a, a very nice experience in the beginning. Sometimes, sometimes it's the opposite, but often it can be like, oh, great, finally I have like some understanding, some guidance, I'm starting to see things, sleep happens easier. And it can be very tempting to just be like, okay, very good, things are good now. Without fully understanding why you had trouble sleeping in the beginning, like you can easily kind of like close the hood. What I mean with that is like when you open the hood, you're kind of looking to see how, how your car is doing, like how it's working, et cetera. And looking inside yourself, like exploring your emotions, your thoughts, your reactions, the fears you have inside can be quite uncomfortable. So it's often very tempting to just say, oh, I'm sleeping better, cool, all right, I don't need to stay here anymore, let's close the hood, and that's it. And what, what often happens then is that, you, you know, there's still some residual fear because there wasn't like complete understanding, right? Um, and and kind of to me, a good place to like graduate or like leave this channel or whatnot. Uh, when you know you're sort of immune to insomnia is when you when you when you can say like I know that there's nothing I can do to sleep, and that feels okay. Then th that that's that's you know then then you're done, right? Then there's nothing more to learn really. But when that like knowing that there's nothing I can do to sleep more, it sparks a little bit of anxiety or fear. Totally normal. That just means you need to do a little bit more learning. But the point here is that often if you don't have that speed bump early on, it can be very tempting to kind of close the hood. It's like, oh, good, I'm done. This, this was easier than I thought or very nice. But uh, but that is quite tricky because then, you know, you'll have a little bit more uh, work ahead of you. So if you have this speed bump, then that almost guarantees that you're not going to close the hood. You're going to be, uh, you're naturally going to be doing some introspection, some learning, and that's going to be really, really helpful and lead you towards a place where you never struggle with, with insomnia again. So that's a real benefit with these speed bumps. Now, number three here, another real nice thing is that you have experienced magic. You have experienced magic because you've, you know, if you had a speed bump, you've had a period before the speed bump where things were happening easier and easier. That's super helpful to see why. The thing is sleeping better always comes from less effort, from nothing, like a rabbit out of the hat. That's why I call it magic. It comes from really no effort, no trying, no belief, no conviction, no hope. It just happened, right? It's magic. It, it, it just, you don't need to do anything for it to happen. And, uh, you know, on the, another way to express this is that you, you became more okay with uncertainty. You know, it didn't bother you so much. Uh, all this is magic. And the confusion can be that you think that, oh, um, I, I was really sleepy that time I slept well or, or I was just exhausted or something like that. But even if you're really, really sleepy and you're, and you're not in this place where you're kind of allowing magic to happen, you won't have the experience of sleeping well. You may sleep more but still be anxious or you may sleep but you don't even perceive it because you, you, you're so hyper aroused. So point here is that when you had a speed bump, you, you've already experienced, you've already seen magic happening, the magic of nothing, which actually ties very nicely into number four here. They're kind of very similar, these ones. The brain wants to recreate magic, you know? When the brain experiences that, whoa, you slept better, then the brain automatically, because it's a problem-solving machine, it wants to go like, why did that happen? I have to figure it out so I can recreate that, so I can do the same thing over again and get the same result. But you see now, that it's not magic happening anymore. It feels like I'm doing exactly the same. Often different clients tell me this, like, but I'm doing the exact same thing as I was before, but now I, you know, I get the very different outcome. The thing is, you're not doing exactly the same thing because you're, you're actually doing something now versus before you're doing nothing. And this can be a little confusing. But when you see this, then you see like, oh, I see like I, magic came from nothing. And now my brain tried to recreate that. And then it became doing something. Aha, uh -huh. this awareness really leads to a place where things are more and more peaceful. And then five, I think this may be actually, I kind of say that what I thought was the most important for last year. The cycle of resistance. Insomnia is a cycle of resistance. And I think this is very helpful to know about when, you know, in the context of these speed bumps. So insomnia starts really with resistance to a sleepless night. I mean, it may not be exactly like this, but basically it's like this, right? That you have one night or a stretch of nights where you slept a little, and then some thought happened like, this is wrong. It shouldn't be like this. Why, why can't I sleep? I have to do something. Now we have resistance towards another sleepless night. You don't want to have another night like this. 
And this, this resistance now leads to preoccupation, worry, exploring, Googling, searching, trying to do things, creating this illusion that there is some danger or fear in the brain. And now this, this resistance again creates insomnia. And so speed bumps, uh, particularly, they come from resistance towards a setback, if you will, you know? So uh, you may have done, you know, better, you slept well, and then for some reason there's like this one night where you sleep less, and then the same resistance that creates insomnia in the first place kicks in, and you're like, oh, what's happening? I'm doing some, something wrong? What, what's happening? Why isn't the, why am I not getting the same result? Now, you know, we're, we're towards the speed bump. Now speed bumps can happen because of the resistance. So I think it's very, very helpful to know that we hear these things in your brain, you know that there may be some trouble on the horizon. For example, how can I stop this speed bump? This is the same resistance that maintains the speed bump, the same resistance that creates insomnia. Or how can I prevent myself from going backwards? Like I don't wanna go back into the rabbit hole. How can I prevent that from happening? This is the resistance that creates insomnia. Or how can I keep this from happening again? This is the resistance that creates that residual trouble, the, the speed bumps, the insomnia, et cetera. So, so you know, often a natural customer becomes like, so what should I do? Awareness is everything. Just understanding all of what we talked about here uh, leads to a place of like no action, like no goal. Like It's like a no goal, no achievement, no action. Nothing is necessary except awareness. And self-kindness, you know, when you have some struggle, you often think there's something wrong with your self-kindness. Always help, but awareness is number one. So these five points, I think, really can bring awareness and be really helpful. And in summary, we have seen that speed bumps are normal. They're proof that your brain is working in a completely normal way. And when the resistance to them fades, so does the struggle overall. When there's no resistance, there is no struggle. Hope this helped. Please let me know in the comment section what you thought about this episode. And um, if you uh, enjoy this channel, if you like the teaching and you'd like a little bit more uh, help on your path towards immunity, sleeping well for the rest of your life, then uh, just head over to our website and you can find uh, several options that may work really well for you. So that's that again. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope to have you back real soon. Until then, take care.